Hey there, Vault Hunters, and welcome back to the channel. It is free content day, also known as the 21st of November 2019, and today Gearbox have given us a great update for Borderlands 3. This is even before the first gameplay DLC is out. Yes, we have the takedown at the Meloan black site, and along with a lot of other bug fixes, things like that. I'm not going to go into every single tiny detail, because trust me, there is a lot, and you do not want to hear my voice for that long. I'm being honest. But the takedown at the Malawan Black site, to get into this, you must first complete the story mode campaign. And then there's a mission on Sanctuary 3 that you can go to to access the Malawan Black site. So the takedowns actually feature special rules that aren't found in the rest of the game. So respawning is disabled. So especially if you're going to try and solo this, that's going to make it quite difficult. I might have to rock my um, reviving siren for this. Uh, and if you do die, though, you're not out permanently if you're in a team. During the first half, you'll get to rejoin the team if they defeat the Volkerai squad. Uh, if you're out in the second half, but your team manages to defeat the Wotan, the Invincible, you'll get to respawn to enjoy the rewards you didn't completely earn. And um, with today as well, not just enough to have the te Maliwan Black Side, we have Mayan 4 mode now, which is really, really cool. been looking forward to this for so long. And they've adjusted... Mayhem modifiers slightly for Mayhem 4 because they are adding in as well uh, additional legendaries and class mods for you to find, which is absolutely fantastic. They've changed the Mayhem station in Sanctuary as well, just adjusted it a little bit. Furthermore, we've got a bank expansion today, which I knew thousands of us have been crying out for for a long time. So uh, all characters now begin the game with 20 bank slots instead of 10. The existing bank SDUs will give everyone a total of 100 available spaces. An additional 10 bank SDUs are available to purchase in Marcus's shop on Sanctuary 3 using the in-game cash currency, each awarding 20 spaces for a grand total of 300 bank spaces. This is excellent. I can't tell you how happy I am with this, especially means you collect so many variants of the weapons now. So that's enough of that. Something else that... I know I've been missing from Borderlands 2 is dedicated loot pool for bosses. Well, they've answered our questions. So now all bosses have been updated with the new loot pools that can give them dedicated legendary items to drop. Players can now discover which bosses drop their favourite gear and more easily farm their favourite items. Can't wait to do, drop some videos on that showing, you know, which bosses drop what. As of now, I have got no idea. Looking forward to doing that. Also, something we've been crying out for is additional vending machines. So the addition, these areas have now got additional vending machines before bosses or midway point in larger environments. These places are Athenus, the Atlas Headquarters, Lecture City, Jacob's Estate, Voracious Canopy, the Pyre of Stars and the Tazandia Ruins. We've also now got a target dummy in Sanctuary, which I think is really cool for testing out DPS on guns as well. So um, Now, quickly go over it. They have added endgame character balances. So with Moe's, the Iron Bear damage is increased per level to a total of just under 150%. Desperate Measures now gives Iron Bear bonuses. Experimental Munitions, Iron Bear also deals bonus fire damage on crit hits. Scorching RPMs also grants increased hard point damage by 5%. Vampire, when Iron Bear deals area damage, Iron Bear receives half the healing bonus. Iron Bear now launches on, uh, barrels when the player melees them. An increased Iron Bear bubble shield from 20 to 50%. Zane Sentinel damage scale increased by 2%. Donny Brook, pocket full of grenades, cool hand, violent violence, and violent speed bonuses now stack twice. Fixed violent momentum to scale more at higher movement speeds. And best save cold radius and damage increased by 2% per level. Confident. Confidence increased max weapon damage bonus from 20% to 35%. Change trick of the light element to cryo and increased bonus from 18 to 36%. Onto flak, ambush predator now has a HUD icon when the buff is active. Increased the pet damage to scale 10 to 5% per level instead of 9. Added pet damage to grim harvest at 7% per level. And added pet damage to the most dangerous game at 9% per level. There is a few other little ones as well, um, not too... Not as important as those, so if you want to check them out, I will leave a link to the patch notes below. As I said, they have fixed a lot of stability issues as well, a good 20 to 30 points, um, varying from PCs to consoles. As I said, I don't want to go into it too much. I know I normally do, but this is a huge update, guy. honestly. I don't want this to be a huge video. You can only take my voice for so long. Um, but one thing I wanted to talk about is the gameplay aspect of updates. So rare hunt and bounty enemies now always match the player level. 
they've made adjustments to default zoom speed for gamepad. Mayhem mods that cancel each other out can no longer be active at the same time. Shields that start regenerating immediately after depleting now properly trigger not depleted events. For example, Mose is no longer available to, able to infinitely stack the damage, health and shield regen buffs of the Brawl Award shield after equipping the Bloodletter class mod. The Rough Rider shield properly triggers depleted augments when equipped, addressed a reported issue where certain shields could provide buffs to players even when not equipped. Players can no longer stack the health regeneration buff of the Brawl Award legendary when repeatedly equipping and unequipping the Brawl Award shield. I never personally did that, it's the first time I've heard of it. Uh, addressed a reported issue where class mods and artifacts were sometimes accumulating action skill cooldowns when respecking. Addressed a reported issue where the Hellwalker anointed parts could sometimes be incorrectly weighed, weighted. Addressed a reported issue that sometimes prevented Zane's barrier from blocking ETEP weapon projectiles. Addressed a reported issue where the action skill cooldown timer for Flax Gamma Burst could sometimes stack cooldowns when players revived or spawned a pet each time. Addressed a reported issue where the skill augment active tracking for Mo sometimes didn't target enemies in turrets. Addressed a reported issue where rare spawn enemies might not have spawned during a mission if already defeated that enemy during that session. So that's all I'll go into for it. As I said, there is all the bug fixes and things like that, a lot of which just have a look to see if some of them have affected you before. I will leave a link for the patch notes below. It is a huge update and patch notes, so be sure to check that out anyway. So I'm going to get off and I'm going to play me some Raid and some Mayhem 4. Hope this was helpful to you. If it was, please smash that subscribe button. I'm so close to 100 subs now, I can almost taste it. Hit that like button. I have been Donny Mayhem, and I will catch you guys next time.